review of the Nomad 2 um, air gun compressor. Um, I've had mine for quite a while now. I've had it, in fact, this is my second one. I had the first one for two years, uh, then it just stopped working. And the manufacturer actually, even though the warranty was only a year uh, and it was out of warranty, they actually replaced it, and gave me a brand new one. Uh, because I'd kept records of every time I used it. I keep a spreadsheet of when I filled the guns up, how long the compressor was on for, and what pressures I filled the gun from and to. And I sent that with the compressor back to the manufacturer via Crawley Surplus, who are a great air gun shop. If you've uh, never been there, you can pay them a visit. Um, and yeah, they sent me a brand new one. So this is actually my second one. Um, I've had this one about a year, so I've had them for about three years. Um, just quickly run through what you get. You get a really nice bag. I mean, it's a heavy duty sort of canvas material. Um, it comes in a really nice, well padded um, box. Um, but the bag is great. You've got two zips. You've got a small pocket there. You've got a larger pocket there. Um, and the carry handle. It does come with a shoulder strap as well, but I took that off. Um, but it's, it's a really nice um, bag and everything fits in it great um, so I'll just quickly run through what you get so you, so obviously you get the uh, the compressor um, you get some filters you get a little spares kit with a couple of washers and a couple of burst discs you get spare fuses and I've added um, fuses to those as well so I've got even more spare fuses you do need to put silicon gun oil in the compressor it comes with no oil in it and um, with these there no there's no water cooling all you do is you add a drop of oil every five fills there's a little hole here in the side of the compressor and basically using these little bottles of silicon oil you put um, I think it's three drops every five fills and then every 20 fills you flush the oil out um, there's basically a drain plug at the bottom so you put oil you put 12 drops of oil in the little drawer hole in the little oil hole while the compressor's running and you have this open and a bit of tissue or a cloth underneath to catch the oil and basically you let the, you let the um, compressor run for about three minutes and you put about 12 drops of oil in so you're putting a drop of oil in every sort of 20 seconds and that flushes it out then you shut that down and the press compressor is good to go again um, the filters you're meant to change every 20 fills um, i've never found any moisture in mine when i've changed them they've never come out wet um, and i've got a few little best fittings Doubtly washers, there's a few washers, there's a little burst disc, I don't know if you can see that there, you get a little bag of spares, which I've never had to use actually. Um, so you get that. You also get, obviously you get a mains lead, because it plugs into the mains, and there's a, there's, a, uh, there's a mains socket there, so this just plugs straight in. When you plug it in and turn the mains on, the fan comes on straight away. Um, so basically the fan's always on until you disconnect from the mains. Um, so let's get rid of that. And you get your filling loop and you get your one mini filter, which has got the, um, the little filters inside. Because I've never found any damp, I only use the one filter and I've never had a problem with it. I know some people put extra filters on um you know that's entirely up to you the the lead is long enough um that you you got plenty of flexibility i mean i, I bought a carbon best fittings carbon 500 mil bottle and the, and the lead the um, the fill loop was only about six inches long which made it really awkward so when you fill in the gun this goes on here yeah that's on and then obviously this end goes onto your filling adapter for your gun um if the burst disc goes on these, which mine never has, there's a little nut there. You undo that and there's a little tiny copper burst disc that you, you can replace. This is your bleed screw. So basically after you've filled your gun to let the pressure off, once you turn the compressor off, you just undo that. And, the, and a tiny couple of drops of moisture sometimes comes out. But like I say, my actual um, filters never seem to get wet. 
Um, these are auto shut off. So you set your, if you see that, you've got a pressure gauge here and you've got a, a needle that you can turn. Um, and whatever you set that to, when the compressor reaches that, it shuts off. Um, I never leave my compressor just in case, you know, so when I'm filling the gun, most of the time it only takes between about two and six minutes to fill my guns, depending on which gun I fill, because some have got bigger bottles and cylinders than others. Um, I never leave it. I'll make sure I'm always here and make sure that it does shut itself off just in case, but it always has. It's never failed to shut off and it's never failed to perform. Um, the last thing you get is you can use these on your car. So you get a 12 volt uh, connector. You've got the you got a 12 volt that plugs in the side of the unit. You see the little yellow connector there. This this plugs into that, and then it unfurls, and you've got your two crocodile clips to connect to your battery. Um, it was quite short. This lead was quite short. Um, if you see the grey section, that's the the section that comes with the the Nomad 2. This red and black section is basically a car jump you know car battery jumper set of leads um i think it they have to be rated to 30 amps but don't quote me on that um so i made sure i got 30 amps jumper leads and i soldered them to the original nomad leads um so whereas initially they were only about six foot long i think now they're about 12 14 foot long so basically i can I can connect this to my car battery at the front and the Nomad can be in the boot of my of my car. Um, and the gun that I'm filling can be in the boot of my car. So you haven't got to put things on the floor if it's wet, if it's muddy. With the lead that comes with it, because it's so short, you have to basically have the Nomad balancing on the front of your car, on the bonnet, somewhere near the battery or have it on the floor. Um, so I didn't want that. Um, I have used my Nomad from the car. You need to have the car running on idle. If you just try and um, charge a gun with it turned off it will drain your battery because it's drawing quite a lot of current um weight wise they're not they're not particularly heavy i don't know how much that weighs i'd say six maybe eight kilos you know maybe three or four bags of sugar um but it's quite easy to to lift you have also got on here again i'm not sure if you can see that what's called a load gauge i think some people think this is temperature and it goes from zero to 30 well i presume it goes more than 30 but they recommend not to go over 30 so when you're charging your gun it normally starts off about 20 and mine it goes to 24 maybe 25 i've never seen it much higher than that but i don't you know charge cylinders and big bottles i only charge my guns like i say it takes between four between two and six minutes so it's never on for more than six minutes really so it doesn't really have a chance to get really hot um yeah so that's the nomad too um they're, they're expensive i mean when i bought mine three years ago you didn't have the, all the cheap chinese clones the tuxins and the ying tongs and all the various other clones and copies of the nomad this was 600 quid when i bought it i think if you shop around you can get it slightly less than that now i think you may be able to get it sort of sub 600 um but the tuxing clones um from about 180 upwards you can get the tuxing clones where they have an external mains adapter this has got the mains adapter built in so it's all one unit so i think the cheaper tuxings have got the unit which is slightly smaller than this and the external mains adapter if you want one that's exactly the same as the nomad where the mains adapter is built into the unit i think they're about 250 at the moment but that's still you know not far off a third of the price of the nomad and if my nomad ever did break again in the future um i would get a tuxing because it's basically the same from what i understand they're pretty much made by the same people in the same factory and just got different names on the on the bodywork um they're a nice bit of kit it's nice to have that independence you know you haven't got to go to a dive shop you haven't got to drive you haven't got to use your time you haven't got to pay um and before i had a compressor i had the um hills um foot pump you know which is great when you got one maybe two pcps i mean i've got four pcps now and, and one of them's over 500 cc it's quite it's got but it's a crowd so it's got a bottle and a cylinder and trying to fill them up with a foot pump is is hard work you know it's not it's not easy um so the no the compressor for me you know you guys that have got compressors know it just gives you that independence you know you've always got air whenever you want it um and that's that's a premium worth paying for 
Uh, but there you go, it is the Nomad. Um, you, you do get instructions with it. Um, I think they're in, the, in here. You get uh, Nomad instructions. It tells you how you fill it with oil, how you change the filter, you know, what you can do with it, what you can't do with it. Um, and actually, they're quite a decent set of instructions. Um, lots of pictures, which make it helpful for the harder thinking. Um, and they're a nice bit of kit. But, as I say, three years ago, there weren't the Chinese clones. Now there are the Chinese clones. And from everything I've read and heard about them, they're just as good for, like I say, not much more than a third of the money. So um, that's where my money will be going next time. But it is a nice bit of kit. Okay, see you later. Bye.